<clears throat> Hello, good morning. It's um, 8.59. Welcome to our prayers. Turn into the um, Church of England Daily Prayer app on um, Thursday the 6th of July. Thomas More, scholar, and John Fisher, Bishop of Rochester, put my teeth in. Um, martyrs during the time of the reformation are mentioned in the church calendar today um we're going to begin our prayers in a minute and um sorry i wasn't on again on tuesday um <clears throat> i'm in a quandary so i want to ask you a question i'm quite happy to um continue to provide something online but I just wonder if we did something earlier in the morning and then it will be available later. Um, <clears throat> the time's not always working for me, but I do want to provide something online. So whether that's um, some type, type of prayer, um, some type of um, Bible reflection, um, if you can, you can let me know in, in, in due course. So um, if you can do that, I'd be very grateful let's keep a moment's quiet and still our hearts in the stillness lord jesus i pray that you breathe your spirit into us come upon us by your power fill us with your presence Help us with our prayers. <coughs> Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. <coughs> As your dawn renews the face of the earth. Bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you, you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, <coughs> open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of God's blessing. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you O God let all the peoples praise you and let the nations rejoice and be glad for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth the increase. And God, our own God, will bless us. <coughs> God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever Amen the night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, <clears throat> set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We turn to our Psalms, this Psalm 90, then this Psalm 92. So I'm going to use the first one 
at Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, for the earth and the world were formed from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it, it is green and flourishes, and in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. <clears throat> our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they will soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us, and for the years in which we have been have seen adversity. Show your servants your works, and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, or prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Going to um, read from Romans chapter 15, verse 22 to the end. <clears throat> and so this is Paul um, speaking to the church, to the Christians in, in Rome. This is the reason that I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now with no further place for me in these regions, I desire, as I have for many years, to come to you when I go to Spain. For I do hope to see you on my journey, and to be sent on by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem in the ministry to the saints, uh, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to share their resources with the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. They were pleased to do this, and indeed they owe it to them, for if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material things. So, when I have completed this, and have delivered to them what has been collected, <clears throat> I will set out by way of you to Spain. And I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in earnest prayer to God, on my behalf, that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my ministry to Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I've done um, a few times, I'm going to um, turn to my actual Bible. Um, my, my text is slightly different because I use the New International Version. I'm so familiar with that. Um, it's just a version I've, uh, I've read for many years. And so I'm going to turn, to turn I said churn then, um, turn to Romans chapter uh, 15. And verse 
if you know anything about the Apostle Paul, he was a man who was um, characterised by being zealous. He was first of all zealous as an orthodox observant Jew. He was um, a member of the, uh, the Pharisees and the Pharisees um, went to, to great lengths to live lives which were um, lives of observance to the law of Moses. And so um, under the, the teaching of the Bible, um, the Old Testament, which Jewish people would know as the Hebrew Scriptures, um, there's only one commandment there <clears throat> to actually fast, and that's on the Day of Atonement. But the Pharisees were so zealous uh, for God that not only did they fast on the Day of Atonement, but they had a tradition in Paul's time uh, of fasting twice a week. And so whatever you would read in, in the Law of Moses, they, they tried to even go beyond what God had prescribed for his people because they were absolutely devoted to um, being obedient to God and living in a way whereby God would be pleased with the nation of Israel. And their hearts were, were, <coughs> were committed to God. Now, the thing is, when, when somebody's zealous and somebody's committed, it's like every walk of life. You would have some of the Pharisees and the Gospels tell us whose teaching came very close to that of Jesus. And indeed some Pharisees supported Jesus. And when we get into the, um, the Acts of the Apostles, there were some Pharisees, teachers of the law and priests who became followers of, of, of Jesus under the ministry of Peter and the Apostles. And so we, we, we mustn't... Um, be unaware of the fact that sometimes um, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are often seen as people who opposed Jesus. That wasn't always the case. There were some who did and there were some who didn't who, and in fact some who supported him. But Paul was one of those Pharisees who um, in his zeal he wanted to eradicate this teaching about Jesus because he saw it as a departure from the tradition and taking Judaism in another direction where it shouldn't be going and so the first time we we meet Paul he's called Saul and the first Christian martyr Stephen is being stoned to death and it says um, Paul gave approval to this stoning and as he watched people put their cloaks at Paul's feet so in other words <clears throat> Paul was a bystander but he was approving of what was going on with the martyrdom of Stephen. And subsequently, he has that vision on the road to Damascus of the risen and ascended Christ. And, and, and Jesus said to him in, in the vision, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So in other words, to persecute the church is to persecute Jesus. Because God is so intimately involved with his people. We bear the name of Jesus. And we know subsequently um, Saul um, became the great preacher to uh, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, and he has his name changed to Paul. And so when we, we pick up um, this portion of Romans, I was just checking in, in my footnotes um, in my own Bible, that Paul is, is wanting to finish off his missionary work in the, the Eastern Mediterranean, and he has a desire to go to Rome. We know that Paul will go to Rome um, eventually anyway because um, he will be accused um, wrongly of bringing the, the Jewish faith into disrepute when he's seen in the temple courts. And there is a great persecution against Paul and Paul appeals to Caesar because he's a Roman citizen. And subsequently what that meant in Roman law is that you could take your case before the emperor. That would eventually lead Paul to go to Rome and Christian tradition tells us that Paul at some stage was martyred in Rome as was Peter at some stage according to Christian tradition. If we look at the life of Paul from when he became a follower of Jesus he faced 
persecution from his own Jewish people. He faced misunderstanding from the people that he preached to. There were times where he was beaten by crowds. There were times where he was ridiculed. There were times where um, he, his, his character was disparaged and people said nasty things about him. There, there, there were times where Paul faced hunger and persecution. And yet in the midst of this, what comes through just this portion that we read in Romans, despite what Paul faces, he is determined to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. It is so easy to be discouraged <clears throat> as a Christian in this country. We don't face persecution, but there are times where <clears throat> some of the things that we believe, if we're going to adhere to the teaching of the Bible, we will certainly face misunderstanding. Some of that misunderstanding will be from our families and our friends. Often though, people will quietly admire what we're doing, but won't share our Christian faith. And in this country, we, we don't face persecution actually. We face a, a different problem on the whole, and that's people seeing the relevance of what we believe in, in terms of our Christian faith. But whether we face persecution or whether we face indifference or whether we face the exciting prospect which is where I see it in some ways that we have an opportunity in this generation in this country an opportunity to once again share the Christian faith because despite what people may say with their feet in other words you know um, people vote with the feet and there are lots of people round us in the neighborhoods where we live not coming into our churches that doesn't mean that the church is completely empty but it does mean I believe we're in a missionary situation where we need to once again bring the good news of Jesus to this nation but when you get to talk to people <clears throat> I find personally that out there beyond the walls of the church there are people who are spiritually hungry there are people who are desperate for love there are people who are weighed down with with the worry and the concerns of life you know where's the money going to come from how am i going to pay the bills <clears throat> there are people who um, face relationship problems with their families single parents or couples who are under stress people who are looking for work people who are at work who are not happy with the job they're doing and there are lots of stresses and strains that people are under and it could go on and on and on you know it what's in your own com community and some of the pressures that people are under there but the greatest thing I believe that we um, can do is, is two things and with this will finish one is build relationships with people because when we build relationships with people the more likely to listen to us when they will ask us about our Christian faith you know it says in Peter always be prepared to give an answer for when people ask you for the hope that you have within why are you a Christian <clears throat> look at the state of the world what is it that me makes you believe in God those are great opportunities they used to call it gossip in the gospel that we talk about Jesus in everyday life in a natural way without being weird or strange and we'll find that people will listen to us because they are spiritually hungry and the other thing um, I want to take from today's Bible passage is this that whatever it was that motivated Paul to never give up and never give in despite the hardships he faced I think we need to find out what that was so that we are encouraged and that we don't give in I'll give you a clue Paul <clears throat> had a life changing encounter with Jesus Christ and so can we it might not be a Damascus Road one but it will be an experience we're told that if, 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 we, if we seek God 
with all of our hearts. We will find him. Maybe that's the thing we should be pursuing at the moment. To seek to know God with all of our hearts. Because it says in Jeremiah, when we do, we will find him. And the other thing is, Paul having had that encounter, like all of the apostles <clears throat> and Jesus himself, they devoted their lives to prayer. We have no idea what God can achieve through us, his people, when we pray. Let us set our hearts at seeking God, praying to him and never being discouraged. I'll leave it there because um, I find that when we um, are reading the scriptures and we're seeking God, we find time and time again that the people that the Bible mentions, whether it's Moses or Elijah, whether it's Paul, whether it's Peter, who were just like us, ordinary human beings who had their lives transformed by an extraordinary God. And the reason they are um, given to us in the scripture is so that we too can have that experience of an extraordinary God who transforms our lives. Before I finish, and we'll pray in just a minute, um, two things to tell you. Um, we're having a, a mission <clears throat> between the 16th and the 23rd of July. Um, when I say we, St Thomas's and some other churches in Blackpool, we're doing stuff like social action. So what we will be doing here is we'll be litter picking, we'll be clearing up an alleyway that we did last year, and we will be trying to demonstrate the love of God in something that's practical that people can see. And as happened last year, excuse me, people will come out and say, what, where are you from and why are you litter picking? We're well, from St Thomas's church, and we're litter picking and we're clearing up the alleyway because we care about the community. Why do you care? Because God cares. And it, it opens up conversations. The other thing that will um, <clears throat> be happening in conjunction is that the Message Trust from Manchester will be taking a team into some of the Blackpool schools, one school in, in Lytham and one school in, in, in Poulton. And they'll be, be doing um, lessons called No More Knives, which is about knife crime. Now, the kids who hear that teaching in the schools during that week they will be invited to a concert <clears throat> at the Paradise Lounge, which is on the Pleasure Beach. And at that concert, they will be given um, through music and through testimony and through a message, a clear, a clear presentation of the gospel, <coughs> where they will be asked to respond. <coughs> so if you could be praying for those things, please do. Now, commit that to your prayers, but the two things that I want to tell you about are two events. Um, actually, there's three. I just, I just remember one. Excuse me. My throat gets very dry. It's, it's medication that I take. Don't worry. Um, on the 9th of July, which is this coming Sunday, at 6 o'clock at uh, Blackpool Church, St John's, um, there will be a prayer event for the mission. It's a time of prayer where we seek God, ask him to pour out his Holy Spirit across this town and do a work in people's lives. And then on the 16th of July, same venue, St. John's Blackpool Church, at 6pm on the um, 16th of, of July, there will be a mission launch event where we are commissioned. Um, bishop Philip, who's now our diocesan bishop, will come and be our preacher and um, that will be a time of committing the week to God and being commissioned. And then on the 29th of July, um, we've got a comedy night at St. Thomas's. So there's a comedian coming called Andy Kind. He's a Christian guy. He's a very good com um, comedian and um, he's worth coming to listen to. It's a free event. You can see details on the um, church website it was advertised um sorry facebook page um it was advertised th th this week andy kind it's a free event you just need to um book via eventbrite and then andy will be uh, speaking at saint thomas's church on the 30th on the sunday morning okay so do um keep an eye out for notifications on facebook 
do pray because these are opportunities for us in our generation to share the gospel and I pray that we will have the same passion that Paul had and the apostles as we share the gospel in our day and our time Lord may we have that uh, transforming encounter with you <clears throat> and may we have that passion for you and may we know that blessing which comes from you as we seek to serve you in this generation in which we live for we ask in Jesus name Amen fear not for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life and you child shall be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins in the tender compassion of our god the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we're going to turn to our prayers. <clears throat> I want to pray, Lord, that your passion, Lord Jesus, would um, fill the hearts of your people here in Blackpool. I pray that you would encourage us in our faith and grant us a, a fresh vision of your call upon our lives and that sense of how you see the communities in which we live. I pray for this community here around St Thomas's Church that Lord you would enable us, your church, to share your love, to speak about you to see people come to faith for individuals and, and families and friends to come to faith I want to ask that you'll move by the power of the Holy Spirit and you transform this community and thinking ahead to the mission week itself that as litter is picked <clears throat> alleyways cleaned lessons are taught in schools Christians get gathered together to to pray that Lord these will be opportunities of people coming to faith that your kingdom would come that your <clears throat> will will be done and that there will be a time of renewal and revival and and growth in the church in our prayers today we want to <clears throat> as for those who, who need your healing touch and so in the silence of our hearts let us each bring to mind those who need God's help this day in body, soul, mind or spirit in the silence let us bring to God those <clears throat> who are finding life difficult at the moment for various reasons
in the silence of our hearts, let us bring to Almighty God those things which um, are upon our own hearts, where we need God to intervene. Let us in the silence of our hearts take some time to give thanks to God for all that is good in our lives. <clears throat> the prayer for today. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you, as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever amen uh, before we finish i'm not sure how many of you um heard me at the beginning so um i'm finding um the times are not always working for me at nine o'clock so there are a couple of things i can do one is pre-record um i want to i want to continue providing something which is which is prayer which is um bible reflection it's something that helps us in our faith i'm just wondering about the time now my my problem is i am an early bird you know so i i get up very early so i could do something earlier in the morning um or i could do something at another time of day um midday or something and then there is the um how often i do this you know so do do i do this twice a week do we do it once a week you know but i do i do want to continue to prov to provide something um online i'm just aware that i can't always make it on a tuesday or sometimes a thursday because nine o'clock can be a time where lots of other things happen which are to do with with ministry and, and life to be perfectly honest so and i also want to ask you because i I could get stuff on the screen which is the daily um, prayer app from the Church of England but if you're happy for me to do it just as I'm doing it because I know everybody has their own phones and um, lots of people have it downloaded on the phones whether you're happy with that so uh, this is by way of a survey not a customer satisfaction survey but in all seriousness seriousness something that works because um, one of the things that did come out of lockdown was the ability to do this, which we probably would have never thought of doing before that. Um, and it's, it's enabling the Christian faith to, to be shared in a way that's wider than we do in our church services. So I will value your thoughts and I know um, you'll do that. So in anticipation, thank you and have a blessed day. We finish with some words at the end of our prayers. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you soon. God bless.